from a communication standpoint, if, if uh, we're still in the same situation um, and, and we're working from home, um, daily video meetings, I agree, um, I think is imperative. Um, I, I call it a drop-off morality box. So uh, in that box, every day uh, you present it to your team uh, with inspirational notes, uh, uh, dealership uh, protocols, uh, and uh, new things that we're following up with. Uh, morning uh, morning follow-up, emails, uh, text messages to customers. Uh, communication is, uh, I think it's very, very important. Uh, I remember your, uh, in our panel discussion yesterday, we talked about, uh, I believe it was Brendan and John were both talking about, uh, uh, you know, videos with customers and follow-up text messages with customers. So keep it simple. Keep, keep the communication simple because it's the most effective way. Awesome. Thank you, Neil. Yeah. Mr. Absolutely. Dan Liska? Yeah, so I, I, I couldn't agree uh, more with Neil on keeping the communication simple. Uh, the video follow-up, I think, is really important for the client communication just because the number one reason our clients aren't getting back to us right now is they don't realize we're human. So just seeing that face there is really, really important. But probably the more important side of the communication strategy, I think, would be injecting that empathy that you were talking about uh, into the one-on-one -on -one meetings that we're having all the time. Because I think that we fall into the trap of 100% of the time being spent on are you meeting the company's objectives as an employee? And I think we really need to start to focus those one-on-ones on are we as a company meeting your needs as an employee and as a human? Um, and I think it's very fair to spend, you know, 5% of the month on that to make sure that, as you said, Raj, uh, we're not getting surprised by anything bubbling up that maybe we weren't inviting a conversation around. Thanks, Dan. Mr. Ralph Sherman, what you got there? Well, I had three guys make some great points before me, so um, not a ton to add to what they've already agree with everything they've said to this point. Um, I think I would just, you know, more want to lay out exactly two scenarios as far as communication strategy. What's our communication strategy with customers? And what's our communication strategy with staff? And I think there are two different planes right now. Our communication with customers would be more on a video mission or a text mission or um, a path to go down because we're working remotely. And more of, as Neil mentioned yesterday, and, and I really like that, more of a daily manager meeting one-on-one -on -one and you know what's your challenges and what have you seen with your staff today so that we can bring the information back or get the information up to the level that it needs to go so we can fix it from the top down. Yeah, and, and you know what, just to build on what Ralph's saying there, I think the key part of you know, what you're saying on the two different strategies, uh, client and staff, is just earlier, way earlier communication with the customers. We're not getting price shopped all the time. You're creating that bond of joint discovery with them as the initial person to help them figure out that they have the problem. and. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, overall, I just think that having technology start to open up those conversations before, and we got to redefine where that initial point of contact starts. Uh, we we got to start that contact in their cell phone, as opposed to expect that they're going to say, I want to be contacted. Would that be more of a... Uh a sort of way of doing it in terms of on a daily standpoint because I, I like what Ralph said you know having the two strategies you know having four employees is perfect right because you, you separate the entities but it still works as one for the customer do you tackle them daily do you tackle them monthly would so it, it depends on the action the customer took if the customer took a passive research action like they couldn't get information that they should have otherwise been able to get like uh, you know uh, an inquiry like give me price information we don't have the right to follow up on that relentlessly but we do have the obligation to follow up on it right away whereas for something like a trade-in or a credit some they they're basically putting up their hand and saying I don't know I don't know what my trade is worth. I don't know if I could get approved. So in that situation, yes, we got to follow up right away, but we also have much more of a right to follow up pretty, pretty assertively over, let's say, the next 10 or 12 days because we can actually help them. I can get you approved. I want to buy your car, all that fun stuff. So I think we just got to look at how the leads are coming in and what action did the buyer take. 